This is the Real Estate Marketing Podcast, where we teach you how to grow your real estate business. Whether you're a wholesaler, investor, or realtor, this podcast is for you. Hey, and welcome back to the Real Estate Marketing Podcast. I'm Austin Glanzer. And I'm Adam Grimm. And in this episode, we brought on Alexander Cruz of CR of Maryland where they are doing some really, really cool things with turnkey properties where you can invest and uh, buy a property that is ready to go and get that money, the cash flow going. And uh, we really thought it was a great concept. So we thought we'd bring them on the show to talk a little bit about their story and then how you guys can get involved with investing in these turnkey, turnkey properties, but also learning a little bit about how they find their properties, how they do marketing, because they have now over 300 properties they're managing. It's just a really cool story. So we wanted to bring him on. And uh, Alexander, if you wouldn't mind uh, saying hi to the audience. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks so much uh, for taking the time this morning. I Even just before we were talking in this podcast, it sounds like you guys have some really cool stuff going on. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing the story of your business. Sure. So uh, my, my partner has been investing in residential real estate since 2004. Uh, and for many years was in the uh, fix and flip world, let's say, uh, which is what he was still doing when when him and I met uh, about seven years ago and we started working together. Um, so we evolved over the years. We, we uh, went from fix and flip to pushing really hard into the rental business and, and creating our own rental portfolio here in Baltimore that we still have today. Um, and, uh, obviously we learned a lot of things along the way. So, um, you know, we, we built up a pretty substantial portfolio and at the same time we built a property management department that is still ours today and, and manages the entire portfolio. Um, so last year we, we kind of reached a point and, and we made a decision that, uh, we weren't going to keep buying rentals for ourselves, but we, we made this pivot where we still continue to buy and renovate uh, rental properties, um, but now we sell them to third-party owners, uh, but we continue the management process for them afterwards. So um, it's been kind of an evolution in our company over the years uh, that's led us to this point today. Yeah, I think that's a really cool process, especially with the, you know, once you start owning enough and you have systems in place, having it so other people can buy it, that's a really unique idea. Um, Can you talk a little bit about how that process works? So like you, someone can come to you, they can buy the property, it's all fixed up. You, do you guys put the tenants in there? Do they have to find the tenants? How does that work? Yeah. No, so we do it all. So the, the homes that we source uh, are going to meet what we call our buy box. It's, a, it's very strict requirements on um, basically making sure that it's a good investment and it's going to have good returns for years to come. Um, then as part of our process, uh, we do our, full, our standard full renovation. Um, now, what, what, does, what does that mean? I can get pretty deep on that, but uh, an interesting fact would be uh, our average renovation cost is a little over $75,000 per house. It's a full gut renovation. So you're getting a new roof, windows, gutters, HVAC, electric plumbing, kitchen, baths, et cetera, are all brand new. So it's true turnkey. You don't have to do anything to the house. Um, and then the back end of that is, like you said, related to property management, um, we're going to, we're going to place the tenant. We're going to advertise it. We're going to place the tenant. Uh, once they pass our screening process, um, we're going to collect the rent. We're going to handle any issues with maintenance. Uh, we do it all. So it, it's a true hands-off passive investment for the new owner, uh, which is why they decide to buy these properties from us. Um, so we, you know, we, we bring the experience of having our own properties here and, you know, having been in the marketplace for a long time now. Um, and then our experience in the construction, this really combines it all into one. Yeah, that is really awesome. And I think it's a great way for people to invest, especially if they're, let's say they have a good job, they kind of want to get into investing in real estate, they're busy. And uh, I think this is a great option for them. So that's really awesome. So I know you guys have like over 300 properties. Can you talk a little bit about how you find these properties? I know a lot of our listeners are, um, you know, they're trying to figure out, okay, how do I market my business? How do I find deals off market properties? What do you guys do to find them? Yeah, so it's a great question. And I was actually talking with somebody about this last night uh, who, who's trying to break into the business. Um, and then obviously you have guys that do a, a ton of business and are still working on figuring this out. So uh, we've created an acquisitions department and the department has two channels, what we'll call. We'll call one on market and the other off market. So on market, 
Uh, we still buy homes on the MLS um, and then, you know, various auction websites. Um, where I have uh, uh, somebody that works with me that it's their full-time job is they're literally scanning those websites all day, every day and running numbers and, and seeing a potential deal. And then we have uh, an estimator out in the field who's going to go out and actually walk these homes and come back with a, a renovation cost so that we can decide if we're going to buy a house or what we're going to offer or no, it doesn't quite work. The layout doesn't work, things like that. Um, so that's one channel of our on-market acquisitions. And then our off-market acquisitions is a whole nother world. Um, so, uh, you know, we cast a really wide net. So we'll do uh, direct mail, SEO, pay-per-click, um, Facebook, depending on, you know, their algorithms at any given time. Um, it, it, it's We cast a wide net into all those different things. And then depending on the month, some things work better than others. So, you know, for somebody just getting started, you probably need to master or get good at one or two of those channels. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to do five different things at once, especially if you're just getting started. But, um, you know, the other thing you should do is talk to people who are already doing it and what are their experiences and what advice do they have uh, and, and what mistakes have they made uh, rather than trying to create the wheel yourself. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit more about the you said earlier, like your boxed in criteria, yep. like what what hits that criteria? How do you know that this is the house we want to invest in? Sure. So uh, part of it's just straight numbers and returns. Um, when we look at a house and a potential deal, we're really good at pricing them. We know what they're going to rent for because we already have homes in the area. Uh, and we know what they're going to sell for because we're halfway decent at, at looking at comps. Um, so then you just work backwards from there and uh, figure out the property taxes. Uh, figure we, we have an auto calculation for financing and things like that. Um, and then we also are going to calculate a, a vacancy rate and a maintenance or a reserve rate. So when you take out all the expenses, we want our properties to have between an 11 and 14% uh, cash on cash return rate from the total cash invested in the deal um, for the end buyer. Um, and again, that assumes a 20% down financing uh, type of deal. So um, that if, if a house doesn't get, provide those returns, we won't buy it. But it's also deeper than that. It's got to be in the right neighborhood. The, the comps have to be there. Um, it has to be where somebody wants to live. Um, you know, we, we won't buy a house next to a gas station because people don't want to live there. There's too much foot traffic, um, things like that. So we're pretty selective on what we're willing to buy. Um, you could almost treat it like, would I be willing to live here uh, if, if this is the, the, the rent range that I was looking to, to live in? Um, so we take that approach and as long as the house checks all the right boxes, uh, we'll proceed with purchasing it and then offering it for sale to our turnkey investors. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if I really covered this too well earlier, where are you investing? So, um, I said in Maryland, but how far out in Maryland, like what areas? Yeah. I mean, we are really smack dab right in the middle in Baltimore. So, um, our office is in Timonium, which is just north of the city. Um, and then everything we do is within about 20 minutes from there. Um, so we cover Baltimore City and Baltimore County. Uh, we don't really go to the outlying counties uh, for this model at all. We, re we really stay close. So can you, I mean, can you talk a little bit about like the Baltimore market? How's the Baltimore market doing? It's doing really well. So, you know, uh, now we're in June. Um, we, we, of course, had no idea what to expect in about mid-March when, when all this COVID nonsense hit and um, were really pleasantly surprised. So um, there's been a, and I think this is nationwide, but there was less deals happening in terms of like a total volume of deals. But the deals that were happening and, and also like the retail market, um, it's multiple offers left and right. The, the competition is... The supply is as low as it's ever been, and the competition is just crazy because there is still a really strong demand from buyers. And then that's also true with tenants on the rental side of the market. Um, our, our tenant activity in terms of online leads uh, spiked uh, towards the end of March, and it's just continued ever since. Um, we're, we're seeing record, record numbers in terms of uh, you know online inquiries for potential tenants, um, and then just how quickly homes are renting. It, it's really a crazy market right now. Um, which is is fun and, uh, you know, I'll say uh, alleviating some stress that we were having in the beginning of March or middle of March and we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so it, it's really, uh, it's it's going well. Values have held strong and continue to increase. Um, and it's just kind of a, a crazy market right now. 
in a good way. What are some of the biggest uh, challenges you're experiencing? So uh, is it more on the acquisition side, the management side? If someone's looking to get into this, what things should they be uh, prepared for? Yeah. So acquisitions is always a challenge. Um, you know, ever since probably, I want to say 2014, maybe 2015, the market has just gotten more and more competitive and uh, money became easier and easier to borrow. And you have like the HGTV effect where everybody wants to be an investor. Um, so acquisitions is just really competitive. You're not competing with like one big buyer. You're competing with thousands of buyers um, who might do only a couple of deals a year, but uh, there's just so many of them. It's always a challenge to buy homes. Um, you know, we're, we're, we'll meet with sellers in the field that want to, that are uh, have a house to sell and they, they'll show us a stack of postcards from 20 other investors. Like it, it's been like that for a long time now. So um, that's an ongoing challenge. It, it, I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's not easy to buy homes. Um, you know, outside of that, there's always the normal challenge of construction. Uh, you know, our, our project managers are chasing down contractors and um, we have, you know, uh, permit inspectors who say they'll be there Tuesday and they don't show up till Friday. Uh, you know, th- th- those are pretty normal challenges um, that, that people deal with. Um, and then, you know, we, we had to make a lot of changes to how we operated when, when COVID hit and, uh, you know, safety for our employees and residents and, and even our customers, you know, potential sellers or buyers or whatever. So, um, but I think now we, we've really settled in and we're used to that, uh, in, in this kind of new way of doing business. And fortunately we were able to stay up and running that whole time. I think that is, really cool everything you guys are doing like having to manage your employees having to manage the tenants i mean that's that's a long uh chain of things that have to happen how many employees do you guys have uh we're at about i think it's 27 uh people now um right in that range could be 26 could be 28 uh don't don't hold me to the number but it's right around there (laughs) okay well that's still cool that's still awesome and I, I kind of want to go back a little bit to to uh, you guys placing your tenants in the market being really, really quick. Um, you know, people wanting to find a place to live, wanting to find a place to buy. I've experienced this myself, actually. I have a couple rental units, nothing crazy. But I was able to place tenants during COVID within 24 hours because wow. you know, there's just not many out there, which was awesome. So how are you guys marketing your properties? Are you using Zillow? Are you using um, the MLS or do you have your own process? Yeah, uh, both, all of the above. So we, we do uh, use Zillow. We we did actually, um, with COVID, decide to put things in the MLS. We hadn't before, um, but just to limit our people meeting with other people, we, we decided to put them in the MLS so agents could show our homes easier and quicker. Um, and then uh, we, we do also, I'll say, self-market. So we have a big tenant base now, and, and we get a lot of uh, referrals. So, uh, you know, Joe, the tenant says, Hey, my, my cousin's looking for a house. Can you guys talk to him? Uh, and then our leasing team will connect with him and t- take him through what's what we have available or what's coming up. Uh, and we place a lot of people that way too. Um, so all the above. Do you guys give a referral like um, commission or anything? Uh, we, so we pay a commission to agents. Um, we actually just last week, we're discussing that uh, coming up with some kind of uh, referral payment for our, our tenants. Um, you know, obviously it can't be a commission, so to speak, cause it's, uh, uh, you know, state laws about that, but we can give them a rent credit or something like that, or, you know, a gift card or, or whatever. So yeah, we're, we're working on that right now. It's a, it's a great idea. And, um, I guess if anybody's I, I, struggling to, to, to place a tenant, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think commission was the wrong word. Uh, I was more yeah. like a gift. A <laughs> gift would be the way I should have yeah. said it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you did that. I had heard some people on other podcasts that are doing stuff like that for referrals. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I think it's so a great idea. When it comes to like marketing your business, I know you have like your uh, on market and off market and you guys have a lot of different things you're doing there. What do you find is the best way to market your business? Is it like SEO? Is it PPC, Facebook? Which one do you guys find the best return on? Man, it's it's kind of weird. It really depends on the month. Because um, some months we're like, wow, pay-per-click crushed it. We got some really good deals out of there. And and usually the, the um, clients that you find in pay-per-click are extremely motivated. Um, they also can be hard to track down. I mean, think about it. They're, they're Googling and they're literally clicking the top result, like, and, and then just firing off a message or a phone call. Um, and they might fire off five at once. And it's kind of like the first one to get them probably wins. Um, and, and so, you know, some months that does really well. Other months, it doesn't do as well. What we have found, the key is to just be consistent with it. 
um, and, and, you know, not make any rapid changes. So if it has a bad month, don't slash it to, you know what I mean? 10% of what you spent last month. Um, just, just kind of ride it out. If you need to make an adjustment, make an adjustment, but, um, same thing with mail. Uh, you know, every time you get a fresh list, returns are always better. Uh, as the list gets older, it tends to be, you know, it, it gets, it gets a little quieter. So, um, it, it, you really have to watch those things closely. And we learned that over the years, we, we definitely made some mistakes along the way of watching the rate of return on, on different marketing pieces. So um, we, we meet about that a couple times a month and now we're re- really dialed in and focused on that. Uh, so you don't want to make rapid adjustments, but you want to make quick adjustments that, that I'll say are more like tinkering, uh, right? Instead of like a, a big, crazy change. Um, so that, that's been our approach and, and that's what's worked well for us. So you guys have a, like a, a really nicely developed process and a whole team of employees. But I'm a little curious, if you were just starting today, uh, with your new business, what types of marketing would you be engaging in? What would be your your go to uh, if you had to start over again and we're starting fresh? Okay, yeah, um, you know, I would have to pick. If I had to pick one, it would probably either be um, mail or combining, you know, some form of SEO and pay per click. Um, it just kind of like I'll say back to basics. Um, mail can get expensive, so depending on your market and uh, how much you're you're going to drop. Um, you know, that can be a pricey way to go. SEO and pay-per-click are honestly pretty easy. Um, and it's a consistent way and, and you can, you can be a beginner and and have great success with it. It's all about, it's your one deal away from hitting a home run. So, um, you know, I, I would pick one of those two directions. So when you guys were getting started, is that what you guys did? Did you build a website? Did you do mainly outbound stuff? Like tell us about the starting process for you. Well, yeah, no, honestly, it was a different time. Uh, so back in like, so when I started with my partner back in, uh, I think it's 2013, we didn't have to do any of that. We could go look at 10 homes on the MLS and make offers on seven and end up buying one or two. Um, it's not like that anymore. Uh, but back then it was just a different time. The, the, the competition wasn't nearly what it is now. Um, and, uh, it was just easier. So that began to shift and change in, I think maybe 2014 into 2015. And then all of a sudden it, we realized like it's a different ball game now. So that's when we started, uh, we started really with, with mail, uh, and then we pushed into the SEO and pay-per-click shortly thereafter. Um, and we've been doing all three ever since. So, um, you know, mail has probably less, it's all lessened. Like your, your rate of return was better back then than it is today. Just a strictly a, a matter of competition and, and supply. Um, but uh, it, it's been a interesting evolution for sure. So starting today is different than it was, I'll say, seven years ago. So why do you think that is? Why is there more competition? Is it actually the HGTV effect or is it like because bigger pockets has gotten bigger? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all of that. And, and real estate investing is sexy. It sounds cool. Um, you know, you see ads with guys driving fancy cars and like, I, I can make you an investor. Um, and you hear a lot of success stories and, you know, there's TV shows and, um, you know, so it looks really sexy on TV, but what they don't show you, uh, or maybe they briefly show you is dealing with uh, homes that are terrible. They smell bad. You get home and you got to change your clothes because they stink uh, for being in the house. And, uh, you know, all the pain along the way, right? So it's, you know, anybody who owns a business or runs a business knows it's not all, you know, roses and rainbows. It's it's a really difficult process um, and it doesn't happen overnight. That being said, anybody can do it. Uh, that's what's great about real estate. And, and I think that's why there's so many people into it is it's not rocket science. You don't have to go to school for eight years to, to start investing in real estate. Um, so I, I think it, it's an awesome world for that. And it's truly limitless in what you can do and get into, uh, which is part of why I love it so much. Um, but uh, yeah, so does that answer that question? Yeah, no, that totally does. And I see it in just my business alone of like, everybody wants to get into real estate investing, right? I'll get like DMs on Instagram. Hey, how can I get started? But they have no idea how yeah. terrible, like some of these houses are. I, I literally like had to change yesterday. I went into a house and it was pretty rough. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I definitely understand. Or just the headaches, you know, like, like you said earlier, someone says they're coming Tuesday. They don't come Friday. They don't come until Friday. Like, yeah, that there's kind just of stuff. a lot of that, but, but that's mm-hmm. part of what I love about this, this turnkey concept and why, um, I'm super passionate about it. Um, I actually, so b- before we were so heavy into turnkey, my, my position, I, I, I was over top of, uh, acquisitions, wholesales, flips, 
and then turnkey as it was starting. I actually handed off uh, managing the wholesale um, and the off-market acquisitions uh, to other people in our company so I could really dive in and focus on this turnkey and, and uh, basically, I'll say make it my life. Although, you know, the whole company is still my life, but um, this model is is awesome. And, and it, if it's done right, of course, uh, there's plenty of people that can do it the wrong way for various reasons, whether it's intentional or not. Uh, but we, we take it seriously to do it right. And we, we have an opportunity for people to invest and get into the business that otherwise they never would. Um, you know, these are people from all over the country that are investing in Baltimore now with us and know that we have their back and, and we're going to treat this property as our own because it was our own. Uh, we have a very vested interest in making sure that their returns are good and they have a good tenant and um, it's not a headache for them. That's the whole point. So that's what I really love about this model and, and it's unique about it. And I didn't even know this existed until last year, uh, to be totally honest with you, this this turnkey concept. It's kind of like the, the best kept secret inside of real estate investing. Um, not many people talk about it. It's not as sexy as flipping and wholesaling. Um, and, and people, when they hear rentals, they kind of groan like, ah, I heard that's a headache. Um, so we, re we remove the headache out of it and give people an opportunity to have real cash flow and real returns. So um, that, that's what I love about it. Yeah, there's also, I think, a cool business lesson there that, um, you know, a lot of times in business, the advice is do the hard things. So for someone just starting out, um, I think you've kind of given them a good example in that you found something that people don't want to do. You found the thing that's maybe not the easiest thing, but it's something a little bit hard. And you guys have found a lot of success there. Um, yeah, anything else you want to say about that in your business or ways you've applied that in your business? Yeah, well, I think it's a really good point. Um, it, like going back to what we talked about earlier, if you were just starting out, I would never advise you to try to become a turnkey provider because you have to be, it combines, like I couldn't do it by myself either. It combines so many people. It combines an acquisitions uh, role. It combines a construction role. It combines a sales role. And then it combines property management, which is one of the hardest things to do. Um, property management I'm referring to, let alone combining all of those just for one house, one deal uh, and one end client. So um, it's a hard thing and it, 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 again, it was an evolution for us to get to this point. Um, and I feel fortunate that we ended up here and we already had the pieces in place to combine it all into one. Um, so, you know, again, going back to depending who the listener is, uh, if you're if you're really just getting in, you got to focus on one thing. You got to be really good at one thing. You can't try to do five different things. It's, it's hard. You can't do that right away. You have to build up to it. So um, that's been something we've talked a lot about and uh, if you look at our, our trajectory over the years, we really put most of our energy into one thing. We had some things going on the side. So for a while, we were all in on fix and flip. And then we were all in on building our rental portfolio. And now we're all in on turnkey. In the meantime, did we do several hundred wholesale deals? We did, but it wasn't the main focus, right? Um, so we, luckily, we had the people and we were big enough to do things on the side. But if we were smaller, we re really have to dive in and just do one. Yeah, I think what you guys are doing is super cool. Um, and yeah, I don't think many people do know about it at all. Like um, if you're listening here and you're like, yeah, I have some extra cash. I want to get into uh, real estate investing. I mean, this is a great option for you to own a property and then have another company take care of everything for you. Like it's a really cool concept. So um, now I was going to also ask you, about like maybe a deal that you've done that went like really, really well for you. You know, you said like you're one deal away from uh, a home run. So can you tell us about like a home run deal out of yeah, all of them? And, uh, yeah, it's always, I guess it's kind of hard to pick one, um, <clears throat> but it, it, it depends. I mean, so uh, one example would be actually a house we have under contract to purchase right now. Um, my, my guys just did a really good job. They they are have it under contract for uh, 170 uh, it's in a great uh, neighborhood that it, the ARV is probably 380 right now. Um, and it's a row home. It needs probably a seventy dollars or $80,000 renovation. So it's just a home run of a deal. He, they did a good job uh, of following up with this guy for months um, who wanted to sell and, and wasn't um, he has his own motivations and pains and it doesn't really care that he knows he's selling it below uh, what he could get on the open market most likely. But again, it's a house that has a smell. Uh, it's got some cat pee odor. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. Um, it's full of junk. It's got original windows. Like it needs a full renovation. Um, but my guys just did a really good job of tracking down this deal. Uh, so, you know, to talk numbers, we can wholesale it and probably make 
uh, 40 to 50,000, which is amazing. Uh, that is a home run. That's not something that happens often at all. Um, or we can just renovate it ourselves and, and resell it. And we'll probably make uh, close to double that. So uh, no matter what, if you buy a house for the right price, you're in a great position. And that's really what it all comes down to. Yeah, that's awesome. So that would be one that you guys would probably buy and flip yourself. Yeah, we're going to, we, we decided to, I think 99% sure we're going to keep that to, to fix and flip. Yep. Yeah, that's really cool. And that's, I mean, that's really important too. It's like that balance of, okay, how many different options can we have in a house? Like having a lot of tricks in your bag, but then also sticking to your one thing, right? So like, I think that's kind of interesting how you guys are trying to balance that, right? Yeah. So uh, like going the other way, um, something we're not good at, something that nobody in our company has done is build homes. So uh, we, it's great to talk about a good deal. We talk about a bad deal. Uh, I bought a house that had like a eight foot wide hole in the roof. It had been there literally for probably 10 years. Um, it was a rancher. It was a brick rancher. It was actually a fairly solid structure, at least on the outside walls. But due to this hole and water pouring in for years, uh, it, it had rotten all the way through the floor joists. The roof joists obviously were gone because it was a big hole. <laughs> um, so we, we got there and uh, somehow we ended up deciding, oh, let's tear the house down and build a new one. Man, uh, what a disaster. So, you know, again, talk about sticking to what you're good at and buying a house right. I probably just shouldn't have bought the house uh, would be mistake number one. Uh, then mistake number two is deciding to try to build a new house that was going to be like 4,000 square feet. Um, let's just put it this way. A year and a half later, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars later, um, we we decided to just sell the lot because we were getting nowhere. We, we just couldn't do it. We didn't know what we were doing, kept running into creating our own mistakes and errors. And, um, you know, it's not what we do. It's not what we're good at. Uh, so lesson was definitely learned the hard way. We, we really learned some lessons there. So uh, if you offer me a lot right now, even if it was like for a dollar and you said you can build a million dollar house here and make a ton of money, I say, no, it's not what we do. We're not good at building. It's not our specialty. We don't have experience in it. We're going to stick with what we do. Um, if you have a row home in Baltimore, I'll be there in five minutes. So uh, that, yeah. that's, a, that's a lesson there. And, and you know, uh, it's fun to talk about good deals. It's not as fun to talk about bad deals, but you can definitely learn from them. Yes. And I, you know, I have a similar story to that. We, we got into a flip and uh, it was like our first flip ever. And uh, our contractor, he caught it on fire actually by accident. And oh God. we are, it's, we're actually just about to sell it like in five days from now put it on the market finally, but it was a huge headache and it's taken way too long. Um, yeah. and we were traditionally just wholesaling and wholetailing and we tried to flip something ourselves. So, um, I, I, you know, I'd like to get to the point where we can flip like consistently, but definitely, um, learned the hard way, but learned a lot of good things from it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, and I think a lot of people hit that, uh, that they hear that story and they're like, Oh man, uh, I don't know if I want to try that. Um, so it, it's a tricky, you know, question. It's like, how and when do I start and how much exposure do I have? And look at all these things that can go wrong. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I totally hear you. And, uh, there's a lot that can go wrong and uh, a lot of moving parts on, on each one. So, um, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying on that. So can you just talk a little bit about how someone could, uh, get engaged with your company? Like if they want to, uh, do this turnkey investment, where can they go? Who can they contact? Um, and maybe what that process would look like. Sure. So I'm, I'm the primary contact for anything, uh, turnkey related, let's say. Um, so easy thing is you can always email me. My email is Alexander at CR of Maryland.com. Uh, so CR, the word of in Maryland, which is spelled out dot com. Um, we have, uh, of course, our website, CR Maryland dot com. Uh, you can click on there and, and I believe it's click on invest and you'll end up on our turnkey page. You can reach out to us that way through email uh, or you can always I think our phone number is on there, too. You can always just give us a call. Um, ask for Alexander. Say you want to talk about turnkey. Um, I'm, I'm happy to talk to anybody. Um, if I don't answer the phone, it's probably because I'm on the other line. But uh, if you leave a message, I promise I'll call you back. So. Um, and, and very responsive to email. So again, this is uh, the core focus of what we do now. And it's uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. So I, I love talking to people about it. Um, I was on the phone last night at uh, 8.30 with a guy from California uh, talking about it. So um, I'm, I'm 100% in and, and love to talk to 
uh, potential investors or or if you're just trying to learn and, and aren't sure what direction to go and I'm happy to talk to you too. It's what we do. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'll, I'll link all of this in the show notes too. So if you're listening, just go to the show notes and you can see his email there and um, what website to go to and everything. So, um, well, I think this was super helpful for a lot of people who are listening to this who are like, you know what? I've wanted to get into real estate. I've wanted to invest. I just don't know how or, you know, I don't have the time. This is a great option uh, if you're listening to this and it's like, okay, I have some money to invest. I would definitely reach out to Alex, um, you know, CR of Maryland. I definitely would reach out to them. So that's really awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for your time, uh, Alex, and today's show. And we are super excited about what you guys are doing. And even cooler that you're not too far from us. So yeah, we'll have to get connected awesome. sometime. Yeah, that'd be great. I look forward to it. We're, we're just about uh, opened up down here. So uh, maybe we can meet out for, for a beer or a cocktail or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be really, really fun. So, hey, thanks so much. And uh, thanks, guys. And we'll catch you later. Thank you both. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Marketing Podcast. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you later.